Good Friday morning. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk. This is a glimpse into real estate, freedom, life, and the pursuit of happiness powered by the Yes Team Realtors. We're live in Charlottesville, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world on the I Love Seville Network. Today's show, phenomenal. Anthony Haro, our guest, the executive director of the Thomas Jefferson Area Coalition for the Homeless. The homeless population in good times, an overlooked population or demographic in our community. Guys, how about in tough times? How much are they overlooked now? We'll talk about that today with Anthony. Judah, why don't we go to the studio camera, my friend, and let's welcome the distinguished gentleman to the show. Good Friday morning, Keith. Good Friday morning to you, Jerry. How are you feeling today, brother? I feel great. You know, it's a wonderful day amen. to be alive. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, we're, uh, <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit on the back half of the show about the market and the governor's uh, opening up of phase one and what kind of impacts that might have on our real estate market and us in general. Uh, but I'm just super excited about introducing uh, my dear friend, Anthony, and I, I like to call him a friend. I hope he reciprocates back. But, uh, you know, he's doing some awesome stuff yes, he is. to the most vulnerable stuff uh, of us all. Um, he's helping them out. So what I want to do is want to kind of check in on them, like we've been doing with elected officials and everybody across the board, and see how this segment of the community is doing and what we can do to help them. I love it. I love it. And guys, give it a like and a share on any of these Facebook pages, just like Neil Williamson did. And thank you, Neil. Thank we, you, Neil. We, we respect you and read your content constantly at this A little network. shout out to Neil. Um, yeah, he's great. Uh, he's great. And uh, go visit uh, Well Hung Vineyards in Gordonsville if you're out and about. Well hung vineyards. I love it. Well done with that, Neil Williamson. Um, Judah, my friend, um, I think it's that time to go to the line. And Judah Woodcower is our director. We're going to Skype Anthony into the program. In fact, it's ringing now. Um, I'm excited for this conversation and to catch up with a gentleman that's now been on this network three times. This is his third time, right? This is his third time. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last time Anthony was on this network was in a real-life capacity. I guess Skyping is real life, but in an in-person capacity. <laughs> he's a real person, And he way. was singing. I mean, he's a yeah. tremendous vocalist as well. I think Charlottesville and Central Virginia are lucky to have this gentleman. Judah, he is on the line. Do I have your green light to welcome him to the show? Anthony, you are live for Charlottesville. Good Friday morning. How are you, uh, our friend? How are you doing? Good morning. I am blessed. Um, thank you. I'm doing well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to steal a little thunder from my friend Keith. Sure. Um, he, he has taught me well in this year of doing this. Sometimes I jump quickly to the story and I forget to ask how you are in fact doing. Um, give us a glimpse into, into you, the mental health, the personal life, everything here, as this time is certainly very nuts for all of us, isn't it? It is. Uh, you know, personally, I'm... Uh, I'm an introvert uh, for the most part, and so, so I'm kind of practiced uh, at this. I was uh, maybe preparing for this, uh, you could say. So personally, you know, with the isolation and the quarantine, well, I feel blessed. I have a great support network. You know, my family and I stay in touch frequently. Uh, friends do as well. Um, so so that, that part hasn't really gotten to me, but, you know, it is an overwhelming need right now for, for the work that I do. Um, it's unprecedented, and that's, that's overwhelming, uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, but, you know, my faith helps me. Uh, my practices help me. Yoga and music uh, all have been key and instrumental for me right now. Oh, I like that. I appreciate that. Hey, Anthony. Hey, Keith. Right, you can't see my mustache behind my, my, my <laughs> mask here, but I, I got to tell you, I love the beard, man. Yeah, you look good. Uh, thank you. Do, thank I, see you. A, I, do I see it. a little gray right there? Is that, is that what I see, or is that just yeah, a bad... Yeah, you, you might. Uh, by, by, really? <laughs> oh. I must be wearing off on you, man. It's the, it's the wisdom. Oh, wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well played, it. Anthony. Well played, baby. <laughs> well done. Well done. So, you know, I love you to death, man. So any opportunity to spend a few minutes with you and talk is uh, no matter if it's virtually or in person or on the phone or in front of a quarter of a million people, which we're going to do at the moment. Um, you know, th those moments I precious very much, uh, precious to me. So look, let's just dive in. You know, Jerry stole yeah. my thunder. How are you personally doing? So I 
I guess I'll have to get into the business. You steal of, my thunder now. Yeah, yeah, I do. I steal your thunder from time to time. <laughs> yeah. So um, this question has been rolling through my head, right? So, um, you know, I deal with uh, real estate on, on an everyday basis. Um, how is this COVID-19 impacting your world? Can you just give us a high level, quick comp? Yeah, I'll do my best. Uh, you know, it it's impacted it at basically every level. Um, you know, is particularly an acute condition, let's say, or a reality, let's say, uh, during a pandemic because people need to stay isolated and in their own safe places. But when you don't have a home to go to, it's very difficult to near impossible for you to stay socially distant. And um, because of that, that's that's caused us to do mainly right now and also implement lots of new types of practices. So the first thing that we've done in the, in the system of care at our shelters, our congregate shelters, is, you know, did uh, protocols where we were checking for symptoms um, daily. Every time someone comes in into any building, uh, mandatory hand washing or sanitization, uh, and then the the spaces are cleaned daily and frequently, um, which is you know just a, a huge shift, which now has been normalized. But you know, implementing that was a definitely a very different type of thing for us to do. Um, and you know, it's it's. It's a lot for our guests and our clients uh, and our staff emotionally and mentally. So it's taxing sure. in that regard as well that we have to really be, uh, I think, you know, aware of and respond to in, in the best way. Um, but when it comes to homelessness, you know, when people are sleeping in a congregate shelter, well, one thing we tried to do as quickly as we could was remove people who are at high risk. So folks who are elderly or um, with complicated health conditions we were able to, to get folks into a hotel. Um, so we currently have 32 people at a hotel right now uh, who are at high risk for COVID so that they have their own rooms to, you know, isolate themselves in and stay and stay healthy and safe that way. And frankly, we need more. Um, we are seeing people still showing up asking for shelter who need uh, a safe congregate, you know, non-congregate place to, to shelter themselves. And we don't have the resources currently to meet the need. Um, so it's an ongoing struggle to try to get the resources in to this issue. Uh, and now, now that we've gotten most of the immediate needs, I think, covered for the, for the most part, not that we, <laughs> that's still an ongoing struggle, but what's uh, become much more apparent is the long-term strategy. You know, it's very clear that this is not going away anytime soon. Uh, and so we really need to start thinking about how do we provide safe places, uh, private rooms for everybody who's experiencing homelessness so, right now. So I'll jump in, took a bunch of notes as you were, as you were talking, just kind of parse this yeah. a little bit into some sure. short of little, little, little questions. So are you seeing an increase? So in homelessness, I wouldn't say it's fair to say we're seeing an increase yet. Um, we are seeing folks, uh, you know, who may have been homeless previously, uh, but let's say, you know, we're couch surfing or, you know, bouncing here to here, and because of the situation, are not able to do that. We are seeing folks come out, you know, in that situation, but thankfully, we haven't seen an, a significant increase in the number of people experiencing literal on the street homelessness. Uh, but what we do expect to see uh, is a lot of people who are, are at imminent risk of homelessness coming out uh, in the coming months, uh, you know, because of the moratorium on evictions and because of financial assistance that's been available in the community, we've been able to kind of slow that, but it is going to be inevitable and we are expecting a significant increase in homelessness prevention uh, needs. So, um, <clears throat> That was kind of where I was going to try to take this this question and this conversation, you know, with with the majority of the folks that are unemployed, they are more than likely a renter, yeah. right? Um, servers, yeah. um, <clears throat> folks that are in the restaurant business, and so forth and so on. So, um, if I'm hearing you right, <clears throat> we're not yet seeing an influx, but you're projecting one. Got it. Right. Yeah, that's right. And and if we don't, as a community, have a, an appropriate 
prevention you know, response for people who are in housing currently but have lost their income, we will absolutely see an increase in literal, you know, on the street homelessness. So I, I do, <clears throat> excuse me, I apologize. I do want to talk about this hotel, yes. uh, let's yeah. call it a fix for the moment, right, the short-term fix. Yeah. So if I understand our conversation earlier, um, Albemarle County stepped up in a big way to help. Is that not correct? That's you, correct, Could you talk yeah. about that absolutely. for a second? Because a lot of people are not, maybe not sure. thinking, you know, I think this is a good example of how local government steps up and, and helps. So I'd love you to give a yeah. shout out about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, huge shout out to Albemarle County for supporting it. And, you know, for the EOC in, in general, the EOC is supported by the city and the UVA and the county. So it is, it is all those entities supporting it so, together. So, Anthony, not um, to interrupt you, but yeah. acronyms, you know, some yeah. folks may not know what EOC oh, means, sorry. so if you wouldn't mind explaining that. The, yeah, yes, absolutely. No, I apologize. apologize. The Emergency Operation, mm -hmm. Emergency Operations Center, it. which um, you know, was a structure of uh, bringing in the, the university, the city, and the county into a group to, to how to help address the COVID response at this time. Supported by the city and UVA, um, and so they were all part of the um, part of the hotel response. But the county recently proposed to, to invest a significant amount of money, um, you know, about one hundred and seventy thousand dollars towards this this issue, which is really commendable. Um, and so will you know, and will help us keep those folks safe uh, going into the future. So um, it is a like you said, a fix. It is not a long term solution and can't be seen as one. We are now just with 30 rooms. Um, we need more rooms, but just with 30 rooms, we're spending about 70 to 80 per month right now um, for for 30 people. Where you know, obviously, if we had permanent housing solutions, we'd be able to keep those folks housed for a lot cheaper, and it would be a permanent solution. So. That's something that's on our minds right now. We want to shift to that as soon as we possibly can. So we've been talking offline about how I can help in my world yeah. and, and trying to see if there's some uh, hotel that possibly could be purchased or you know some or land and kind of construct something that that might meet this need. So with all these folks watching, if you feel the need to help. Um, I'm sure in the yeah. in the feed, Judah will put in the best way to contact you. But you know, I, I think the idea that you're proposing about converting a, a hotel or great idea. maybe a school or something along those lines yeah. into that is a great thing. It has a bunch of issues with it about you know transportation, but you're a smart guy; you you can figure it out. Um, yeah. One of the things that I, I always amazes me about this city is its ability and this region, its ability to care and give. We were talking about this the other day. Um, so for for a while there, Yona and I gave out a bunch of uh, gift cards to Marie Bet on the show. And every single person who won that said, give it to somebody you need. So I walked yeah. and gave it to homeless folks and said, here's a $25 gift, gift certificate go get yourself some coffee or, or whatever on it. So we've got some loving and caring people in this town. I, I, I think you're going to get some, some help on it. So I'm going to pass it over to Jerry, see if he's got any Great. questions on the feed, and I'll jump on, Thanks, on the Pete. back end of it. Um, so this question comes in. It's a good one. Um, Susan Steimart, mm -hmm. um, she says, Anthony, um, are other innovative ideas that you're seeing from other communities that you can relay on air? Um, you follow this closely. What other communities are doing new things in this pandemic? It's a good, Great question. a good question. Thank you, Susan. It is. You know, I think the the what I've seen in other communities and what we're what we're hoping to do here is to purchase a hotel. I mean, the reason it's such a innovative idea and applicable right now is that it both provides us a place immediately for pl for people to be in their own private rooms, but it also allows us as a community to, to have and, and renovate that for permanent housing moving forward, you know, put in little kitchen units and create efficiencies. It's, you know, one bedroom or efficiencies are one of the biggest needs we have in the rental market right now. And so it would do both of those things for us, which is, which is really key. I mean, the, the congregate shelter model where you have many people sleeping is, really just not long-term a viable solution for homelessness. We really need to shift towards everybody having their own home, which has always been our goal, but has been really COVID 
right now as the as the solution for homelessness. So that I, I want to keep highlighting that. I think that's the best solution I've heard of is buying property, giving people an opportunity to have their own home right now instead of shelter. Um, good answer. How about a, a, a story or a glimpse, how you've seen folks in the community step up, rise to the occasion. So what we're trying to do with yeah. the platform is, I mean, we have enough uncertainty with our day to day. So what we're trying to do with like the show and the network is just to offer a realistic, a, kind of like an escape and a little hope and positivity. Sure. How about some hope and positivity that you've seen out there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, the, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm just surrounded by heroes, per, uh, to, to be frank. Um, you know, Pacham, our emergency shelter, uh, their staff are working on site day to day with clients, you know, wearing masks, keeping socially distant as best they can. But uh, Salvation Army doing the same thing with their, with their guests that they have on site. Um, and I want to give a shout out too to some, some UVA medical students that have been really pretty awesome that stepped up right away. Um, Shafali Hegda, Jacqueline Carson, and Rebecca Kowalski uh, have been leading a group of, of volunteers, medical student volunteers, who deliver food every day to 30 of the folks in, in the hotel situation, and they call them every day to check up, see how they're doing. Um, pretty amazing uh, volunteer response that, that that was able to come up. So huge, lots of heroes out there in the community for sure. The Haven, obviously, they're also on site. Staff is there every day supporting folks with meals. So, um, so an Anthony, pretty amazing work. Anthony, yeah. you're a hero. You are a hero, dude. Right? You, you are a hero. hero. I Don't want. look in that mirror and say and say it next time you shave, if that should ever happen. So, <laughs> but you're you're a hero, man. You're Thank out you. there doing the stuff, you know. So, folks, if they don't understand, you know, your job is to coordinate all these other entities, right? So, that's a, not an easy task at all. And and thank God, you, you you know, you are who you are because all this lands on your shoulders, right? So, you're a hero. I have faith in you, brother. I got. It. How about this topic for you? Thank we had you. uh we thank had you. Jen Jacobs, a hip on the show, yeah, this week. Hey, Jen. Um, she's fabulous, as you know. Um, and I and, and I threw yeah. this to her. Um, you guys as nonprofits have always had the challenge of fundraising. Oh yeah. That challenge probably yeah. even more prevalent than ever right now, um, especially as we head yeah. into a budget that is really uncertain for the city in Almoral. Let me get out of the way on that topic for you, Anthony. Yeah, I mean, you said it. I don't know that there's much else I can I can add to it. It is, you know, uncertain uh, territory we're moving into, and yet we have we are resolved in the work that must be done in the meantime. Um, but it's obviously on our minds. There is a lot of opportunities right now, and have been from federal, um, you know, sources and other private sources to to meet the increased needs. And I want to give a shout out to to those entities, you know, um, CACF and United Way and the city coming together for that for that fund has been pretty instrumental. And even outside of that, just private folks coming up, stepping up. But, you know, is it sustainable is a question that's on my mind. Uh, so it's it's certainly on our minds. Yeah. So, you know, the, the develop a build a brain of mine is constantly turning to, to figure out how how to solve this. A really smart guy once told me the best way to fix homeless is to put folks in homes. I'm not really yeah. sure who that guy was. I think that was Anthony, right? It could have been Anthony. I think that was Anthony. Right? <laughs> and, and the light bulb kind of went off when, and I went, well, duh. He and, taught me that too. Yeah. So, you know, again, anything who's watching on the feed, is there any way we can help yeah. Anthony make some magic happen, please reach out to me personally or however you yeah. guys want to do it to go ahead and, and, and move it on. Um, as you know, I sit on a couple of Nonprofits. One of them is an affordable housing nonprofit, and we're going to talk about this on the back end of the show. And it's not really a question in this; more of a, you know, a concern of mine. Um, yeah. I think the affordability index is going to get worse, and it's not going to get better. And snapshots of of numbers and and the market that we'll talk about a little bit on the back end of the show is is just reinforcing that. So this concern this crisis right i think it's only going to get worse so again you know if we can help anthony find a piece of land i yeah. personally love the 
love the whole homeless vet thing. I think it was done in Pittsburgh, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. with these little yeah. tiny houses. It's my mm-hmm. kind of excited about it. But we're here to help. We're here to move forward. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of getting close to the back end of our time here together. Sure. But what, what, else can, what else can we get out there to, to take Jerry's uh, approach of, ex, of positive? What, what's positively sure. happening in this well, space? You know, I think, well, I'll, I'll just say that one thing is that we've noticed, you know, folks that have a rent subsidy right now, um, you know, who, who are part of that support network, uh, we've seen our, you know, We've seen how important that is right now, right? Uh, and so I think we've seen the, the the value of having those types of safety nets in our community. And we need, I mean, so that, that's been a huge plus, right? Thank God we had that before COVID because those folks are still able to stay in their homes because there's, you know, they're receiving rental assistance. And, you know, frankly, moving into this uh, un- unknown territory moving forward with the economy, we need we need that same type of assistance, but for, you know, for more people, especially folks, you know, experiencing homelessness. I mean, I think the ideal solution is, like you said, you purchase a hotel, uh, then we've got homes for folks, you know, uh, essentially. Um, but if that, you know, either way, we need to we need to do to support these folks in housing um, moving forward. Um, so, I think this thing to end on is that our safety net has been so helpful, especially in this time. So just one second. Can I talk about what yeah. we're trying to do with Facebook and the multiple people, Jerry? Sure. So um, we're trying to put together um, a setup for next Friday with a roundtable of local uh, elected officials, and we're working through Facebook and some different software magic. And I say we. It's not me. It's them. <laughs> right? Uh, I, but he, he's really good at supervising, Anthony. I'm really good. He's really good at supervising. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what we'll hope is is that we'll be able to get two or three different elected officials from different jurisdictions in one conversation at the time virtually. And one of the questions I hope to ask, if I could, we all can put it together, is, you know, how is the budget process going, right? Are, are we going to be able yeah. to continue to support organizations like yourself? So are you seeing any, are you having any questions with, lo- excuse me, conversations with local elected officials about they may be reducing Revenue is that conversation happening at all? Good question. I I haven't had that good. conversation personally yet. That's no. a good thing. That's a good thing, man. Yeah, I I, yeah. I can tell you on the nonprofit I sit on, we're, that conversation is happening. So sure, so that's yeah. a good well, thing. Well, I mean, I, I know inevitably it's going to be on the table. It's just I haven't had it, it yet, maybe, right. but. Well, yeah. well, we're going to ask um, it next Friday if I can put everybody together. Or let me rephrase sure. that, if they can put everything together. Gotcha. Anthony, you're a good man. Great. We appreciate you hey, so Anthony, much. Anthony, love you, brother. Um, Thank you for having me on and for bringing awareness to this issue. I appreciate our it. Our pleasure. You have a good one. I hope to see you soon. You too, Take Jerry. care. Good to see you, buddy. Um, Thanks. Bye-bye. Anthony Harrell, boys and girls. Great guy. Yeah, you know, it's just, uh, you know, um, I, I often think about Anthony and... Think about my personality, right? Oh, yeah. I could not never do his job. I, I, you have to be so. I mean, I just, uh, I my frustration level would go through the roof. He's the man. It. He's yeah. the man. And I think in, in this time, um, it's interesting because times of hardship oftentimes narrow the vision to what is immediate and applying directly to our family. What can I do right now to help me and my immediate family get out of this? And in times of hardship, our perspective narrows and the homeless population is is forgotten. Totally, totally agree with that. But I disagree with the the first portion of that. Maybe it's just, I just see a ton of people out helping. I'll give you an example. We were at um, Costco, Yona and I, yesterday. And uh, because our daughters coming in this weekend and our grandson so obviously we needed to load up on god only knows what <laughs> i think toys i have no idea little harry's a big eater i think we bought toys oh you bought toys i don't know <laughs> but the funny thing was um this guy was bought a bunch of very tall trees it was an elderly gentleman and and the funny thing is i turn around the corner of my eye and everybody had masks on 
but the people were helping him put it in his vehicle. They, 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 you know, so the positiveness of people never ceases to amaze me. Welcome Josh Elwood to the show. Hey, Your Josh. brother-in-law, James Watson, Lee Hughes, the commercial agent watching the hey. program. Hello. Thank you for joining us. What struck you from the interview with Anthony? Uh, it, that's a very bad question to ask me because I'm just the whole in, thing. I'm in love with this guy. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I, <laughs> there's nothing he ever says or does that I would have anything. It's just, he's the right guy for the right job at the right place. I like the hotel innovation. Yeah, so um, un unfortunately, um, uh, finding a hotel, because hotels are doing better than everybody thinks they're doing, um, finding dirt in this town, and there's this whole question of, of, you know, fine, if we find something outside of town, how we're going to transport, and, you know, but, the conversation's happening, which is this first step. Well, I hadn't even thought about this till he brought it up on the show. The shelter, the current shelter infrastructure of congregating in one big sure. open room and sleeping on cots, yeah, I mean, that's the antithesis of what we want in a pandemic. A yeah, well, I mean, if you do your homework and your history in the 1918 Spanish flu, that's how it started. It started with uh, service folks coming back from, from World War I and barracks and... Anybody who's ever been in the military that's lived in barracks, they kind of understand how that goes. And, yeah. And we go and do that. If we're dotting the I's and crossing the T's on the Anthony interview, guys, the folks that are watching the Thomas Jefferson Area Coalition for the Homeless, he's the executive director. The innovation they're pursuing is potentially a hotel to uh, rehab and or remodel. Land. Or, or land. Or land. Uh, to rehab, remodel, or build mm -hmm. um, efficiencies for people and to move away from the shelter in a congregate congregation open room with cots and have small efficiencies to breed health and privacy community and a home um well like like my good friend anthony said the best way to solve it is to put people in homes yeah. Amen. and they're not homeless any longer yona says thank you anthony for yeah. coming on the show uh, one of my favorite aspects of this show is the knowledge i gain from you oh. and your colleagues and I think you have an idea of where I may be heading. Sure. That's um, the reason I turned my laptop on. I, I, I was excited when you did. <laughs> my friend, open-ended, week over week, since last Friday. So we're going to tag that a little bit on the back end, but I kind of want to talk a little bit, take a few minutes to talk a little bit about um, what starts today. Yeah. This phase one. Um, we talked about this on Tuesday. The hero, my number one hero in my life is um, my father. And he used to have this saying, um, bat, you know, safety first, Batman. And I found a clip, and hopefully Judah can put it on. I just kind of want to add a little bit of levity here to this conversation. But those of us that have a, this amount of gray that used to actually watch. I used to watch the reruns. Yeah, but I used to actually. You watch, watch it in real time. <laughs> yeah, it. you watch it in real time. I watch the reruns. I'll tell you, when, when I saw the clip um, before the show, it, had, it, it made me nostalgic of a happy feeling. Yeah, and that's, you know, I. I, it really did. I, I came up with this Batman, uh, safety first Batman. And and when we see it, it's funny how TV it's and programming and content yeah, has no changed, kidding. isn't it? I'll tell you, I was telling Yona on the way in. Um, Let's get this ready to play, but we're going to keep talking to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what yeah. were you telling her? Well, it's amazing <laughs> how sensibilities changed. Uh, he, Batman's kind of offensive. Yeah, <laughs> <Kind> Batman <laughs> back then was saying some ballsy stuff. Well, you could ballsy. say that stuff oh, now. Man, but, so I had to be very careful with the clip to make sure it wasn't <laughs> a ballsy in, one? inappropriate. <laughs> inappropriate is a better word. Thank you very much. All right, Judah, let's play it on one, okay? Play uh, Batman Robin, courtesy of the big, beautiful brain that is Keith Smith. Oh. And three, and two, and one. until you're old enough to get a driver's license, Robin. Then you'll be able to drive the Batmobile and other vehicles. Remember, motorist safety. Gosh, Batman, when you put it that way. A little levity <laughs> is what you were looking for, my That's friend. What I, was for. I, Yona, I drove Yona nuts. I was up at 4.30 in the morning working on this, and I literally was laughing my butt off. And she wakes up and she goes, what the hell's wrong with you? And I said, after 30... How many times does Yona say about that to say, you about to say. After 35, after 35 years together, you haven't figured that out yet? 
<laughs> oh gosh, I'm watching it now, and it makes me happy. She, Robin looks so young. <laughs> well, Robin looks like a little boy in this in so, this video. So what do you think we do here? Oh, you I'm the Robin. I'm the Robin. This is the Batman over here. I got it. Now I see why you, you should, this th- clip is playing. What do you think I was trying to? Found out I was 36 the other day, and you lost your marbles. I lost my marbles. I did lose my marbles. I got, thank you for playing that. You're getting some likes on the feed right now. Cool. Kevin Walter, welcome to the program. My friend, the nitty gritty? Yeah, so... Uh, you know, the I, reopening? Yeah, so I, I'll, I was thinking on the way in, and Yon and I were talking, you know, from our perspective, uh-huh. um, we're basically going to see how this next two weeks go from how we're going to function in our business. We're not changing any of our protocols. We're not engaging in any open houses. We just want to see how the next two weeks... And the whole premise of this clip is, you know... Everybody needs to be thinking about the other guy or the other gal, right? And so you're playing the waiting game. Uh, no, we're just not. We've implemented all these policies and procedures, uh-huh. and we're just not going to change them. And we're just going to see how the next two weeks go, and then how the next two weeks go, and, and follow the governor's advice and and feedback on it. Uh, what's been the most challenging for your profession with this? What's been, what's been the most challenging? Restaurants, we see their plight. Vineyards, wineries, breweries, we see their plight. Retail, we see their plight. It's very obvious. What's the challenge for the realtors? So I, I think the challenge is, is the, the way you have to now communicate with folks. Okay. Right? So uh, we had this conversation before, text and an email. Um, we were just talking about this yesterday. My th- email traffic has went up almost 300%. Your email traffic has gone up 300%. 300%. Wow. And I don't read emails anyway. Yeah, right. So it makes it even worse. They're a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah, well, I have a new policy that if I can read it in 30 to 60 seconds, I read it. Otherwise, it's when I get an opportunity to do it. It's just an insane amount of yeah. e- email traffic. So it's, it's communicating, right? It, it's, it's what we all do well anyway, um, but it's communicating. And um, the, uh, the, the interview we did with... Uh, Christopher and Donnie yeah. was, you know, confidence, right? This, this whole confidence. That, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Maintaining confidence. Yeah, and, and communicating with people and making sure they understand it and they, they have up-to-minute information and, hey, look, we care about your safety. These are the protocols that we've put in place. So I don't, personally don't think it's a challenge. Jan and I do this very well to start with, and I don't mean to be no, patting myself on the back. Yeah, I know what you meant. But, but you know, we've we kind of been doing this anyway. We just kind of amped it up, amped it up a little bit. Um, Jonas says, you are a funny guy. Yeah. Um, so we've got to clear that up. And I think yeah. he's also funny, Yona, as well. Yeah. Um, this is where your daughters then say, Jerry, stop with the man crush. Yeah, um, well, they're, you're, they're from gonna Seattle act. and New York City, yeah. throwing some shade on the show yeah. from Seattle, New York City. Um, well, I want to bring you ladies onto the show one yeah. time, and yeah. we will see how you do under the lights and the microphone. If we can organize that, that would be lovely. Uh, I've been trying that. It's funny. And they said no, right? It's funny how they say it's no. It's funny how they say no. <laughs> Everyone has something to say until you get invited on the show. And then everybody goes, Everyone's oh, like, ah, oh, you know. Oh. <laughs> you know, um, but the Smiths, anytime are welcome on the program. Um, my friend, the numbers. Yeah, so um, I ran, you know, we started this on Tuesday or last Friday. I, c- I can't remember when we started it. It's just trying to take a look at what's going on in the last two weeks, starting from uh March 24th when we had to stay at home, right? Yep. And and this is going to make sense to this conversation we had with Anthony. You know, so what I did is I just ran what's sold. 25-mile radius, um, our normal counties and jurisdictions and city. Um, and so in 19, we had 75 units closed. So these are uh, detached, attached, and condos. No new construction. I took that out because it'll skew the numbers a little bit, right? So it was 75 units closed. The median, median days on market was 18. And the sale, median sale price, that means what it closed, was 294. This last two weeks, 2020, same parameters, right? Last two weeks, contracts from 324 forward, because we wanted to include that in there. Yeah. 
there was 15 less sales. So there were 60 sales. So that's kind of matching what everybody's talking about. Yeah. Volume, volume is down, but there was two less days on market. So it was 16 versus 18, 16 in 2020, 18 in 19. But what's, I just, which is shocking me, frankly, is um, the median sales price was three seven. Excuse me, three forty seven. My dyslexia kicked in. That's fifty grand plus or minus higher. Twenty twenty, and and this is what we're going to talk about today. Why? Okay, so he's basically saying um, he's taking a year, a period of time, two weeks, just two weeks, yeah. two weeks in twenty twenty and two weeks in twenty nineteen, and he's comparing them, and he's comparing volume of sales and Correct. number of transactions. The number of transactions is down. But there's two less days in that period of time. The price point median has gone up 50K in 2020 despite a historical pandemic. What do you attribute that to? That's a great question. Right? I don't have the answer to that. And maybe there's a ton of really smart real estate agents. And that's not even average. That could be skewed by a high dollar price. Yeah, well, that's the reason we use median. That's why median is great. It it kicks you high and you low. Yeah, right. What do you attribute that? You got to attribute to something. Is yeah. it the lack of inventory I, on the market? I think that's it. Yeah. I think it's the lack of inventory. And, and again, there's a bunch of really smart people on the feed, and maybe they can chime in on it. But, you know, I, I'm So let the- me ask that question. Everybody that's watching the show, realtors, um, businessmen, businesswomen, economic, uh, people that do economics and like to make predictions, here's the question we have. What was the period? So it's the last two weeks. Yeah. From yesterday, going back two weeks. Uh-huh. Um, closings sold, yeah. actually closed, from contracts written when the governor put in. So it was 324. And then what I did in 19 is use the same date. So it was an equal comparison. Yeah. And it's roughly 50 grand higher. $50,000 yeah. higher yeah. in 2020 over this two-week period of time. Since this started. What do you guys attribute that yeah. to? We're curious. We think it may be lack of inventory in the market. Because of a lack of inventory, it's creating some higher price point demand you know it's it gotta be, be it could be interest rates are a little bit lower right so people you know the price is going up but I, you know i think it's inventory i think uh, if i remember ray on tuesday chimed in and we can look at it live there was like 50 some odd houses that went pending since friday i think or something 50 else. some houses yeah. pending since friday um well, interesting i'm gonna check that live as would you go would you advise to list now yeah, well... Because no inventory and price points up. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh, look, if you're in the market to sell, nothing has really changed, right? Um, uh, buyers, everybody kind of predicted buyers been looking for a deal in this, and we just haven't seen it. Now, we're not seeing, at least in our world, what Yona and I deal with, we're not seeing multiple markups, you know, multiple bids going up. But we, we, we talked about this. We had a... Listing we put on in Cascadia on Saturday morning. We got someone that lives in Cascadia watching the program right now. Cool. And, uh, you know, it went under contract pretty darn quick within the day. So You had eight hours, right? Something like that. That's well, me. That didn't quite go under contract now, but we got our offers, first set of offers in within eight hours. And it was funny because the buyer profiles of yeah. the multiple offers were folks that have already sold their homes. We're sitting in a month-to-month apartment. Interesting. Right? Had a little bit of cash, right? So they were able to to act on it pretty quickly, and they've been waiting for the right property to pop up. That In that one instance, that's how that went. That's a lot of uh, things that were working in your favor for that particular well, deal. You well, didn't have a domino deal that was relying on other properties selling. That's exactly right. Okay, so that that is huge. The contingencies were minimal. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Uh, Claire... Crane oh, says yeah. this. Well, I know Claire it's well. a seller's market. This is great news, right, Keith? That's what she says. Yeah. Well, I think it's a. I think personally, I think it's a neutral market. A neutral market. I think, and, and so we said that before. It's it's real estate's four things. And Claire, by the way, uh, a shout out Wahoo Barbecue, uh-huh. uh, out in Palmyra. Um, I gotta try it. I haven't tried it. Is it legit? Dude, it's, it's good. A, awesome. Yeah. Get the ribs. Okay. Uh, Wahoo Barbecue, yeah, getting yeah. some love right here. Claire I, I, Crane. Yeah, yeah I, I gained about 10 pounds. From Dang. Oh, yeah, yeah, You're yeah, not yeah. showing it. Well, I wear baggy clothes. Mike, <laughs> Michael Guthrie, the chief executive officer of Roy Wheeler Realty Company, watching the program. He has this question. Cool. Keith, are those numbers with 
or without new construction. I, 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 Michael, we dropped the new construction, so yeah. it wouldn't skew. It. New purposely. construction dropped from that, so it wouldn't skew. Good question from Guthrie. Oh, absolutely. So th this is purely um, residential, detached, attached in condos, no new construction uh, in it. So I'm going to keep a track on them. Yeah, it's right? a good one. Because um, we did this last week, and it was not quite... Uh, 50,000 is actually a little higher than that. So maybe as the next set of times go by, it might end up dropping down. But it's a pretty interesting um, thing. So I'm just looking right here. We have a, a, a monitor. Uh, so far today, 18 homes went on the market. 18 homes were listed today. Today, yeah. On the MLS. Mm -hmm. is that, how, how does that put in perspective since the pandemic? I've been tracking them. They, they, they were – so most folks have been, I think, kind of waiting What's a good number? What's a number where you see here listed and you're like, oh my gosh? Well, I mean, before the pandemic, well, we were we were not that high, and I'm going to stumble a little bit on uh -huh. this because I just don't have the data to support it, and I don't want to say something that is inaccurate. But um, you know, you're, we're starting to see things come on on a regular basis. So I know we're talking about trying to do this, but let's see today. So we have this hot sheet. I love this stuff. I know you do. I asked him at the beginning of the show, do you mind if I bring my laptop right, on? Like, and please he got, do. He got all excited. I do. I was the, I was the guy, the geek um, in second grade that had the sports page at breakfast, and I'd go through the stats page, page two of the sports page, and just pour hours of my time into the batting box, the you know box scores and all that. Um, he's pulling up some numbers now. Neil Williams then sent you a graphic that you're going to love. I'm oh, going to cool. show that to you right after you get to the, uh, the numbers you're pulling. No, that's okay. You know, I, I, it's going to take me a minute to, to go ahead and uh, set this up. Um, it's very interesting what's happening in, in, in the market out there. Uh, you are of the impression that we may have a third or fourth quarter pick up. I think we certainly hope. Well, apparently I do because we're betting a bottle we are, of bourbon. We are betting a bottle of bourbon. <laughs> we're following that. I won't let you forget that. I know that. Uh, Michael is an independent arbiter um, and that's a judge right. here. In fact, right. he offered to pick up the tab should you lose this wager on a Riggleman's bottle of bourbon. Um, so he may be handing that to me along with you, and then I'll open it up and pour one for everybody. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. I, I follow it not as closely as you, and I'm happy to hear that 18 homes go on the market today. So um, Thursday to Thursday, yeah, 7th through the 14th, same 25-mile radius, 94 homes went into pending. Do that again? So, Thursday to Thursday. Thursday to Thursday. Yeah. 94 homes went in pending. This is this 25 mile. I like to look at this 25 mile radius. Yeah. From UVA. That's a lot. That's 94, yeah. 94 homes, Thursday to Thursday, go from active to pending. That's correct, yeah. Which means under contract. That's, is that, is that? That's a, that's a big number. That's a big number, right? So, interesting. Is that a big number in, in pandemic times or a big number overall, even if it wasn't a pandemic? Uh, I think it's kind of getting back up to normal dates, but I, again, I don't have the data from a year ago. Okay. So one of the problem, not the, one of the struggles with the system, I only can really check solds because a year ago, if it was acting or pending and closed, then it comes off of those. Sure. So it's pretty hard to double check that number, but I can tell you, ninety homes in that same radius became active in the same, so the same week, ninety went active, ninety four went pending. So those who track absorption rates. That's a pretty darn good absorption yeah, rate. that's a good absorption rate. Um, so if you had your druthers and you had some magical powers to impact the market, what you would do would be inventory. Ask that question again? Like, that's, that's the only thing this market's missing from a healthy standpoint. Yeah, right? so, correct. You got low interest rates. Yep. You got a good community to live in. Yep. Um, you have people for the most part, willing to lend money, although the credit markets are getting a little harder. Slide one he wants. The credit markets are getting a little tighter. People want to live here. We just need homes to sell and buy. So we're going to pop up a slide here that NAR put out, National Association of Realtors. So they, they do these flash surveys. So this is from... It's on screen. Oh, got it. Um, so 77, these, so they poll 100,000 real estate agents nationwide, and 77% of the sellers that they're talking to are getting their house ready, 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 excuse me, waiting for this moment to put it back on. 
And I'll tell you, conversations we're having with sellers is the same thing, right? Yeah. Hey, I'm getting my house ready. I'll put it back on. And we're encouraging folks. So if you're ready to go and sell, I mean, there are, there are buyers, clearly. Nine, there was 94 buyers in the last week um, that went ahead and did it. But I was trying to find a number that, um, let's see if we go back a little further. Um, John Updike, welcome to the program. Jonas Smith says, equal homes coming on the market daily and going under contract. That's exactly Good right. perspective from Yona. You have a handful of firms watching the program um, as we speak. The slide, 77% of potential sellers are making preparations to sell their home once the orders are lifted. That's why we're seeing all the people at the Lowe's and Home Depot. Oh, the man. place is crushing it. Dude. I went there yesterday. It's banana. It might be the most dangerous place in Charlottesville. Might be the Lowe's on 29. I would agree. It's it's bananas in there. Well, it's bananas, and and frankly, some people are not following. Right, I know. I I actually I actually walked out yesterday. You did. I did. You did. You're like, this is crazy, right? I'm not taking this risk. Yeah. And turn around, walked out. So you you're doing work on your home. You went there, get some stuff for the house. You walked in, and what happened? I looked around and. I had my mask on, and I said, ah, this isn't this important. I turned around and walked out. It was nuts. It's nuts. Uh, so two weeks back from 4-2 to, uh, to um, excuse me, from four, I was a, it was a whole month. I apologize. I missed, a, missed it here. Jonas says a phenomenal time to put your house on the market. That's exactly right. Last two weeks, 152 went active. And hold on one second. I know this is a little boring, maybe for some folks. 165 went pending. Wow. So that's from 430 to yesterday. 165 went pending. And there's activity, guys. And, there's activity. And 152 went mm-hmm. active. So, you know, there's a really smart people out there that that will take a look at that and you know, share it. But I think, I think the biggest struggle that we're having is every, not struggle, but what I've been, my brain is going, hmm, is um, when you, you just have to figure out how to communicate this to somebody in the way that they understand it, right? Or they feel comfortable about it. Because it's funny, you have a conversation with some people that are in the medical field, and you tell them that the real estate market is humming along. You're gonna. Well, I don't know. You're gonna do that, but they're like, so. Yeah. There are the heroes right now. Yeah. There are the now special forces yeah. right now. They're 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 laser focused on the battle, right? And it's just hard for them to understand. Oh my God, uh, something else is going on uh, on it. But um, yeah, so it, it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Somebody was asking me, um, you know. Wh- Earlier today, and I thought I thought I'd prepare a neat uh, yesterday. Excuse me, is what the the appreciation difference between the last turn down? So this is slide two, Judah. The last downturn and this one. Oh, what's that? What did they ask you? I love this stuff. Got it. Annual home price appreciation. So what what is your home appreciated in value? So from two thousand and eight. To now, how much did home values increase? So this is different. So this slide okay. is showing year over year the first six years. So this is from 2000 to 2005. Okay. And they the minimum appreciation was somewhere around 9%. And then in 04, which was when things were going nuts, they were appreciating about 12%. And it's important, 14 through 19, we've been appreciating somewhere between 4 to 6%. This is nationally, of course, right? And... Uh, you know, some pockets a little bit higher. But what's the important part about that is we we didn't have this crazy run up yeah. in value, right? To allow a massive crash to happen. Well, which yeah, I see what you're saying. Well, and then if if Judah shows the third slide, the second component to that was in, interesting. Well, in 2004, 2005, this cup of coffee could borrow half a million dollars. That's very true. Now, not the case. No, and, and actually, for those of us in the trade, um, the underwriting restrictions are getting more difficult as this started. That's right, and the credit, the credit markets are getting tighter. Credit tar- is getting higher, your, your, your credit score is going up. Yeah. So, again, I'm just trying to reconcile this data, right? So, we've got, cre- we've got credit is a little bit harder to get. Yes. A lot harder to get. A lot harder to get. To get. 
Um, Which it probably should be. Oh, amen. Yeah. I, I, uh, you mind if I tell a story? I would love to. I love your stories. So, uh, true story. Yeah. How often do you hear that at home? I love your stories. Please tell. Please well, talk as long as you want. I love you. So <laughs> I, I, can, I can tell my stories. With, with your daughters, do they say another story, Dad? Just shut up, old man. Is that what they say? <laughs> shut up, you old man. You are outnumbered. You got Yoda, your two daughters. Isn't your dog a female? Cats are female. The cats are female. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the fish are female. <laughs> but I can't female. figure out how you tell. <laughs> how do you tell? I don't know. Did you pick it up and look? I think how you tell. Did by... you pick up the bowl and look? I actually took the fish and flipped it over. <laughs> you did <laughs> no, not. I didn't. <laughs> tell me your story. <laughs> so true story. So you know, back in the day when we used to, are we on? Are we live? Oh, we're live. <laughs> okay. I know it. that's what's good about doing this. You forget. With... I totally forget. Yeah, that me that. too. So um, it was back in the day. So looking at slide number three, you know, if everybody looks at this two thousand four, five, and six. <laughs> Where the 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 housing bubble was, and they have these you know these credit availability with some huge number. As God is my witness, I'd be sitting in my office, and bankers would walk in, and local bankers by the by the way, and offer me negative primes. So in other words, they would say, "Hey, we're going to give you money to do this development, to do this building, and oh by the way, we're going to pay you to borrow money." And I would literally kick him out of the office. I said, get the hell out of here, man. Yeah. This is not sustain. I'm not that smart, right? I don't have a PhD after my name. Well, what was the hustle? How would they, it would then adjust to market? Their hustle was, their hustle was just to make a deal, right? And they get the super excited and, and so forth and so on. And I had to slow them down. I had a little bit of flavor to it. And I was going like, well, hold it. This is unsustainable. Yeah. Tell me right. how this works. Right. Right? And yeah. tell me when something happens, how this works. I, well, got, a, I got a similar story. For something you. happened in 2008. Something happened. <laughs> so uh, you'll get a kick out of this. I bought my first place when I was 25. Good for you, man. Villas at Southern Ridge. Mm-hmm. The only thing I could afford, uh, 2008, worst time to potentially buy. Um, I had no idea. Young, dumb, you know how the saying goes. So I'm buying the place. I go to Countrywide. Oh. Countrywide now doesn't even exist. It was oh. purchased by Bank of America, right? Countrywide. And the broker, who I'm not going to name at Countrywide, says, you know what, Jerry? You're 25 years old. You can't put 20% down. You don't have much money in the bank. You only have one credit card, so you pretty much have no credit history because you activated this credit card months before just to try to make me happy to say you have credit. And you got a loan. I'll give you a loan. I was <laughs> like, what the heck? What the heck? And he gave me a loan. Yeah. So Six and an eight, 30 year fix, bought the place, ended up now it's a rental property paid off. That's why it's called a bubble. Right. That's and dude, all so many of my buddies at that point did the same thing. Yeah. So many of them not in that house anymore yeah. that they got. Well, the difference was is you kind of built your way out of it a little yeah. bit. But yeah, so um, one of the things that we might want to throw a question in the feed for the real estate agents that are watching this um, is what are they starting to see the trend and the buyer trend, right? Are you starting to see people move out of the urban environment into the... 100%, right? I, I'm starting. We're starting to see yeah. that. So uh, that's slide four. This is yeah. an interesting topic that I think we should t- cover. Can I throw this to you? Sure. If I can get my mask to stay on. Will the pandemic change human behavior enough where baby boomers and millennials that were otherwise making a push to densely populated cities, driving up the price of real estate, will they change their mindset and go to suburbia for more space, more safety, more backyard, more hangout at home opportunity? So... Funny, I was going to prepare a slide for that, and I decided not to do that, but that is absolutely true. The, the, the millennials are starting, but that really started prior to this, to be honest with you. Um, most of it was because of the affordability issue, right? They're, mo- they're, moving, they're moving out um, to that. But um, So I just want to just check something. Yona says, you guys, next week, all the ladies are coming on the show. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that's the whole reason I want the whole FaceTime thing. All the ladies are coming on the show next Uh week. Um, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that, Yona. So uh, last two weeks, went into pending, Charlottesville only, no new construction, uh, 30 homes went under. under. 
Just out of curiosity. 30. Interesting. And you're going to compare it to? I just want to see what the median sales price is. I mean, I, guys, it's a topic to, to cover. Here's the topic to yeah, consider. So How is it going to affect affordable housing? Well, that's what I'm worried. So that's what I was talking to you know? Anthony about the affordability index. So the median. So they haven't closed yet. So these are just list prices at this point. Um, was thirty three hundred and thirty seven thousand was the median. Really? So Ten days on market. Um, total of thirty. Interesting. I think. I mean, your show. I'm, I'm here. You know, sitting shotgun with you. I would love. To spend an hour with so, you analyzing that. Same two weeks? Yeah. Only 12 houses went on the market. Interesting. So there's your inventory. There's, there's the inventory. Mm -hmm. No, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that, you know, we're only looking at two weeks. A house could have been on the market 60 days ago or something like that. Well, it's a glimpse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are just, all these are just quick little snapshots, but the trend is, uh, trend is up there. I'm just curious on how much actually sold in the city in the same two weeks. Very intriguing, guys. Um, what time is it? 11.14. Yeah. Look at that. What do you got for the weekend? Uh, we are getting the house ready for our grandson. So uh, we are uh, nearly 60 year old, except for my wife. She's much younger than me. She's 38. You're 60. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. <laughs> I think that would be illegal, but anyway. <laughs> well, She looks 38. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're getting our house um, child. I mean, what you, what you need to do, right? You're... Like we, we like have bottle of boozes in town low and stuff. So we got to get a baby safe. So, oh yeah. So we're. I, I know all about that. That's no easy task. I believe, I'm pretty sure it's illegal to duct tape them somewhere. So <laughs> I guess I got to get the house. Ready. He's only half joking. Charles yeah, only half joking. In Central Virginia. <laughs> only half He's only half joking. Um, well, I wish you the best, my so, friend. So Charlottesville last two weeks. Um, Let's let's put in COVID nineteen date of March. I'm sorry if this is boring people. What are you looking up? I wanted to see what sold in Charlottesville last two weeks from three twenty four this last okay. forward. So fourteen sold. Closed. 14. Actually closed. Now let's see what the median sale price is. Fourteen homes. Mm. Three ninety seven. Was the median sales price? Something. If you if you're gonna learn something, on we we had a lot of knowledge bombs on the show. This is one of the things I learned. The two weeks from COVID nineteen until yesterday, from March twenty fourth until was it yesterday? So that's more than two weeks. Uh, I believe it's two weeks. Okay, I may be wrong. Fifty thousand dollar increase year over year in median sales prices in Charlottesville and in this uh, area um, with home sales. That is nuts. Number seven. A fifty thousand dollar increase in median sales price, um, which is nuts. And he's going to put slide seven on screen. That's on screen. Yeah. So it's just a, 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 a quote from Harry S. Truman. You know, America, we'll get through this. Your boy Neil Williamson goes yep. on this note. You'll get a chuckle. Oh. <laughs> he gave you a Batman <laughs> gift. I put that. Or I guess that's Robin. Yeah. Uh, that's you, buddy. Yeah, that's me. You going? Wow. I'm Robin. He's, <laughs> He's <back>. Robin. <laughs> this is real talk. We'll have to get. We'll have to get suits for next. Do you want to do that? No, I do not want to do that. <laughs> I would do that. Nobody wants to see me in spandex. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is free. no. That is so true. We don't want to. Nobody wants to see. Nobody wants to see. Nobody wants to this see is you. real talk powered by the Yes Team Realtors. Airs Tuesdays and Fridays on the I Love Seville Network. We have fun. We bring real estate to you in a digestible fashion. We are going to close with a video. Yeah, just a, a little up, little upbeat video on what the market's doing and some quotes for some some folks. But hey, uh, shout out Judah, thanks man. I dumped this on you at the last minute, so thank you very much. You're a pro. Play it in three, two, one. Thank you, Judah. Thank you, brother. Thank you.